Wow, what's up, Kyle? Oh, fuck. Well, what's up, buddy? My dude. My dude. <clears throat> that just doesn't sound right coming from <laughs> So are you still... I can't remember something today. Are you still speculating in Twitter stock? Is that still a thing you do? Do what? Yeah, I have a bunch. Why? You understand why that stock is like... Why people think that stock is a bad ombre, right? You understand why people are so down on that, right? I mean, I've heard lots of things. Why? What's here? Because that's a company that doesn't pay any dividends and doesn't make any money and doesn't grow and it isn't growing anymore. Yeah. And those are kind of like the main things for, I mean, those are like kind of the most basic things for what a company is that you want to invest in. It's either got to be growing or making money. Yeah. These are, so these are my problems with Twitter. I'm fully convinced that the CEO is incompetent as fuck. My problems with Twitter are, well, so firstly, let's talk about Twitter as a platform. I personally think that Twitter is indispensable as a platform. Do you agree or do you disagree with that? I think that Twitter has found certain niches that it fills that nobody is competing in at the moment. Like nobody, for instance, I would say that um, esports is really minor, but I would say that news and sports reporting are two things that happen on Twitter, that Twitter is an indispensable platform. Sure, it's okay. very ingrained at this point. Yeah, like I would, hardcore. Yeah. Um, draft picks, anything having to do with, with sports is like hardcore communi communicable, communicatable or whatever on Twitter and like in ways that it hasn't, it hasn't seemed to have been in other ways. So I think that Twitter has its niche there. I like that. So Twitter's problem is that it stopped growing. I don't think that's a problem unless you're like hyper obsessed with growth. But it seems like the biggest problem is that the CEO hasn't been willing to invest time into turning Twitter into a profitable platform. I feel like Twitter just needs to start making money and like not be so focused on this hyper growth and not do all these weird fucking strange ass side projects and then it'll be a good ombre that's like my goal i i just don't know that i don't know how much money there is to be made there well the, i mean like online advertising i remember reading the other i remember reading that in 2016 google was tw all growth in online advertising google accounted for 60 percent of it and i think mm -hmm. facebook accounted for like 43 percent of it and then everyone else combined had negative 3%. How was that possible? Like, they shrunk. Like, the change in it. Like, oh, so, that you're talking about derivative. Okay, yeah, I understand. The yeah, so it. it's like Google and Facebook are literally online advertising revenue, and that's like it. Sure. It's like, well, I mean, that's everyone else is in decline except for those two, and they're eating, like, the entire amount of the market. Yeah, sure. So I don't know how, I don't know. I feel like monetizing Twitter is not an easy thing to do, and you need to be able to monetize it better if it's ever going to be unprofitable. Yeah, that may never happen. I could see that. Yeah, it's it's possible. Like, I'm not sure, but like the problem is like I haven't seen anybody try to do it. They haven't even tried to monetize Twitter. Like it seems like there are so many better ways. Like here is like this is like a quick thing that I pointed out a while ago. It was like um, I don't remember if we talked about this or I talked about this with something else, right? But like I just watched the wrong game, and now people are gonna message me thinking I'm gonna play this game. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, they why, were already why the fuck isn't there any type of advertising on these pages, it, on pages with tweets? It doesn't make any sense. When you have a massive tweet, right? People don't go through Twitter. People oftentimes are here for a single tweet, right? Like if there is a draft pick or something, oftentimes people are there just for that single thread. Why isn't there an ad or a promoted product or something in this whole thread? You're getting tons of people that are being that are that are traffic for your website that aren't being monetized at all, converted into paying customers or converted into advertising revenue in some way. How is this possible? I don't know. Like you know, when you open your feed, you don't see an ad as always the second tweet. No, no, you might on your feed, right? But like, I don't know if Twitter will ever be a social media platform in the same way that Facebook or Instagram is, right? Twitter's so main strengths second. are like. This is like a big piece of news that's happening now. Bam, here's the tweet. That's like Twitter's, that's where Twitter is indispensable. Twitter is not indispensable as a media platform, right? Instagram is better for sharing pictures. Um, Snapchat is better for talking to people. Facebook is better for overall social media. I don't know if Twitter will ever compete in any of those areas, but what Twitter does is Twitter gives you 140 character snippets of news in a quicker and more digestible way than anybody else does. If that's their niche and that's what they're strongest at, why don't they monetize that? And that's where some of the biggest traffic is from, right? When you've got a tweet, with 100,000 views, oh, I'm sorry, 100,000 engagements, which means potentially tens of millions of views, why the fuck aren't these monetized? Why aren't these pictures monetized? I um, think you over, I think you over estimate their ability to monetize this shit. I don't think advertising is as easy as you think it is. But any ad like, at all, reason, like why are like, they trying? Well, the, well, because who's gonna, they have to have someone to pay for it. 
the reason why Google and Facebook are so have so much of the advertising market I mean, just, is because they know so much about you. They have so much data on their on their users. I don't think yeah, Twitter but nowadays, has... fucking, you got fifty trillion. They can't plug into any kind of Google cookie. They can't plug into any other type of advertising metric. I don't know metric, that that's like... enough. I don't know that that's enough. I don't like, know. The, like Google and Facebook's ability to target advertising, I think, is the reason why they are like the mad. The vast majority of yeah, no, for sure. I agree. Point. Like the targeted advertising think... is good, but I don't understand Twitter. Like even a base, it sounds crude, but like even some sort of AdSense plugin or something. Like there's no way that Twitter can leverage Google's advertising platform to make money. Like that just seems impossible to me. I think it's. I think advertising is in decline. I think internet advertising itself is in decline. Yeah, of course it is. But success, like, I don't know that that's a successful business model going forward, and I don't know that it'll, that's something that's. I feel like that's way too easy of a solution. For them to just not do it not even consider but it. why don't they even try why can't we have more ads Be, but instead you see them doing like well i don't agree i think that the weird side parts they're like trying to get like live tv and football like that seemed like a weird i don't like who goes to twitter to watch live streams like um i don't know i i think that i just thought it felt like their focus was in the wrong direction like you should sure. be if you're a user you should be able to pay money to twitter ten dollars or maybe even like a two dollar monthly fee to be able to tweet past the 140 character limit maybe up to 500 or a thousand dollars these are easy ways you could collect revenue from power users i would pay for it i would pay five dollars a month to be able to tweet up to a thousand characters or and even 15 to tweet up to ten thousand right i would do this in a heartbeat um there are ways there and there has to be there has to be some form of advertising that you can do the internet and cookie and targeted ads are a very powerful thing. I, I refuse to believe that it was it would the be only, impossible the only that, to monetize only, a Twitter stream. Like, there's no way. The only people that make really make money off of advertising are the ones that hold all the information. Those are the only ones. Google. Yeah, but Facebook again, like I make ones. I like why can't they do something with Google? Why would Google want to do something with them? Because that's how Google makes their money. Google makes money advertising. They cut it. They, they make they, money selling ads. Yeah. No. What? They make money selling ads. But no, but Google offer also offers advertising platforms. AdSense is their platform that you use to advertise on. They don't just work as like an intermediary that just sells you ads. They also give you a platform that, to display ads on. Yeah. Like for instance, like my, that, like if you go to, if you go to destiny.gg, right? And you go to my blog section, like those ads are all delivered via AdSense, right? Google, um, Google might buy and sell ads, but they also have platforms to display those advertisements on. Well, this is all speculation, but I guess my bottom line is I think Twitter stock. I'm with I'm with the majority. I think Twitter stock is a bad ombre. I mean, I, it might be. I'm probably gonna I'm, I'm probably gonna dump it soon, just because I wish there was a different CEO. I just wish that I saw more effort in attempts to monetize it. But it's been up like almost 25 percent the past few days. I might dump it when I hit parity again, just so that because yeah, I don't I don't feel like going like I don't feel like sitting on it for years and years with no dividends and yeah. <clears throat> I just think that advertising in general is yeah of course advertising in, in general decline. is it has always been a decline i mean i you know i make a living off of advertising right i know this firsthand yeah yeah um, well not anymore you make a living off of subscribers you sure but i mean i'm still yeah 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 right well, back when you could make eight thousand a month to, with four thousand yeah. viewers showing ads on twitch and now you get like maybe 800 to a thousand a month maybe maybe it's gone down significantly and Google and everything and advertisers are much more picky. But that's also because advertising has become like laser focused too, right? It used to be that people just throw money at you just to get into a market. But now people can specifically see how much a viewer is worth, how much money they get for a particular ad. They can track consumer behavior. They can track that shit so well that they're not going to just waste a fuck ton of money to get access to a market when they know exactly how their advertisements perform, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, um... <laughs> oh, man. Multiplier, what are we doing? Okay, let me explain this real quick, okay? If there are any PhD members out there, you can correct me, okay? But from the PhDs that I've talked to and from the reading I've done on this, this is a very wishy-washy thing that a lot of people don't understand. So when somebody says that a trait is heritable, okay, 
there, just because a trait is heritable doesn't necessarily mean that the differences between people can be traced to heritability, if that makes sense. So let me try to explain this. If there's a genetics guy in here, I know I've talked to a couple. If there's another like high level like genetics guy in here or somebody that's like doing um, biology or whatever, correct me if I'm wrong, but like if somebody says that 80% of genetics is heritable, or I'm sorry, that I'm sorry. All of your genetics are heritable. If somebody says that 80% of your intelligence is heritable and one guy has 150 IQ and the other guy has 100 IQ, it doesn't mean that all of the difference or even necessarily that any difference is explained by the heritability of the genetics that, 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 that or of the intelligence, that those two things are different statements, right? That just because something is highly heritable doesn't necessarily mean that differences between two different people will be explained by the heritability, if that makes sense. Right, is how it's been explained to me. That's why the bell curve was a terrible book because racists and idiots can't distinguish the points made. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting to realize that. Um, after listening to that podcast, I said it actually really, really bothers me at how negative a view I had of that book because of how fucking stupid the people that cite it are. It really, and it bothers me that nobody on the left ever clarified. I've never heard, an, but I've never read any academic critique of it, so I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I just went to the, I went to the Wikipedia page. For that book there's a one there's a lot there but two i mean there's some pretty choice quotes that kind of are pretty obvious that they, they aren't saying what a lot of these race realist people or whatever you're saying th 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 this book does not agree with that wait i'm sorry i said that could you rephrase that um like if you go to the wikipedia page there's a section about uh where is it race and intelligence and there's some good quotes in there from the book that i think pretty obviously say the opposite of what most people that you've talked to say. Sure. <clears throat> um, let me read this real fast then. One part of the controversy concerned the parts of the book which dealt with racial group differences in IQ and the consequences of this. The authors were reported throughout the popular press as arguing that these IQ differences are genetic and that they did indeed write in chapter 13, it seems highly likely to us that both genes and the environment have something to do with racial differences. The introduction to the chapter more cautiously states, the debates about whether and how much genes and environment have to do with ethnic differences remains unresolved. So something that he said in the podcast that sounded very intelligent to me and very academic was, he, in the podcast, the guy said, if you're telling me that genes have no influence on intelligence, then it, the challenge is on you to prove that intelligence is 100% determined by the environment, which is almost impossible to do. That's a very careful and a very well-worded academic statement. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good statement, I think, right? It is possible that genes, um, to some extent, do determine our, our intelligence. And I, I would even go as further as to say, it is possible, maybe, that there are differences between races of people that hasn't been shown to any significant or even, I think, minor extent Extent, but it's possible, sure. And and this book in some part explores um, genetics and their influence on people's intelligence. But people, the race realists, take this book to an absurd extreme, saying that if you read the bell curve, it's like proven that black people are inferior intellectually by one standard deviation to white people in intelligence because of their genes. Like, but it doesn't from what i heard of the guy speaking yesterday, this book doesn't even come close to going on to make those types of statements. You're, well, I'm looking at what you're reading right now. I'm like, read like two points. Read like the bullet point. Yeah, sure. Like the, when like, several prominent critics turned that into an assumption that the authors had attributed most or all of the racial differences in IQ to genes, co-author Charles Murray responded by quoting two passages from the book. If the reader is now con oh, and he said this as much in the podcast. If the reader yeah. is now convinced that either the genetic or environmental explanation has one out to the exclusion of the other, we have not done a sufficiently good job of presenting one side or the other. It seems highly likely to us that both genes and the environment have something to do with racial differences. What might the mix be? We are absolutely, or I'm sorry, we are resolutely agnostic on that issue. As far as we can determine, the evidence does not justify an estimate. This is this flies so far in the face of everybody that I've ever heard talk about this book. And then in the next point, if tomorrow you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that all the cognitive differences between races were 100% genetic in origin, nothing of any significance should change. The knowledge would give you no reason to treat individuals differently than if ethnic differences were 100% environmental, right? So in this, right, and people use this book to justify the creation of an ethno state, right? Um Reading comprehension, huh? Sure. I don't know. Are we playing a video game? I don't remember. Um, yeah. Multiplayer game. Tough umbrays. Is that what you call this? <gasps> oh! 
Oh no. <laughs> um Have you tried loading a save? Are you ready to start oh. a new game, Kyle? Why? Did you delete the save or something? Because it says the current version we're on is 0.15.6. Was there a factorio update? Yeah, we started on like 0.15.4. You should be able to load it. We started on 0.15.3. Or 3, yeah. I can't. It's still the same. I can't. It says can't. Oh, wait. Am I looking at replays? Click multiplayer. Click load game. Tough ombre. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. It worked. Okay. I was about to say, their patches don't usually break games. Yeah, okay. It was because I, I, I was trying could, to load a replay, I guess. Yeah. I remember you could, you could like, load an old map without uranium, and there would be uranium on it. No, there wouldn't be, Kyle. You're totally fucking wrong. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't tried it. So maybe I am totally wrong. All right, how do we feel about automating books, Kyle? But we're working on. I need. We need more red chips, Sweet. so I'm gonna double this. I can. This can take more. And they're not books, but you know. Shh. Always be books <laughs> to me, Kyle. Guys, I recorded. I did so much work today, Kyle. I went to the bank. I shipped some things, and I recorded the Last of Us review, finally, and I recorded a video reviewing these Taiwan Treats package thing. Wow. That seems super productive. Yee. All because I was busy fucking sleeping like a... like a lazy piece of shit. So my sleep schedule is currently fucked. Oh, the end of month video I haven't done yet, but somebody emailed me. Somebody did like a big review that was like an hour. It took me an hour and a half to get through of all the conversation I had with Sargon. I wanted to review that before I made my video, and I just went through all of that today as well. So, done a lot of memes today, boys. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we fucked on copper? Oh, we're just using so much. So your point of view is Sam Harris changed a lot after watching the video? No, Sam Harris didn't really do much. He was just kind of talking to the dude. I don't know he asked. He, not well. Just kind of asked questions. I don't know about Sam Harris. I know significantly less than even you do. Sure. I don't know much about him. I just, the little I've seen has given me a very bad, he just seems like a very irrational person. But I mean, um, I don't know. I don't think, I probably wouldn't hate him, I don't think. Like, some people think that I'm, like, hardcore, like, anti-Sam Harris. I just really don't like his thought process. But the problem is there are some people that are, like, hardcore, like, Sam Harris fanboys. So if you say, like, anything bad about him, they get, like, really fucking triggered. I just know you didn't like his TED Talk. No, I really didn't. Are we getting... Oh, we are... Oh, kind of... Hey, chat, type E if you think Bombjin should hang himself, ye. We really need blue tracks. Like to. Well, logistics, it's. Yeah, it's, it's what we're researching. Sure, Once yeah. I get done with that, then all you need to do is basically turn it on. I've even got it all set up for you over here. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty much. Once we have blue track, then I can, like, super finish the, um, the furnaces, how they should be, how God intended them to be. Um, we're really cucked on purple. Is that just because our. We just don't have the. Yeah, it's these so. same things, I think. Wait, what? No, we're not getting furnaces out of it. Yeah, Why because of something that was... Red chips, red chips, red chips. Yeah. Because I started production of science books, or speed modules. How am I going to get more? Oh, I should just be able to fucking... How am I going to do this?
Oh, has the new YouTube thing killed your... So I think seven of my videos got demonetized. So it's not like a big deal to me. What happened with YouTube? Um, they're starting to demonetize, demonetize videos that are like, that they deem very offensive or something. Really? Yeah. I can't see any of my revenue data though from like before this month and I don't know why. This has persisted throughout a week. I tried to initiate a leave with um with Maker though. I'm wondering if that's fucking my shit up somehow. Is that the people you're partnered with or whatever? Yeah. Is there a reason why you want to leave them out of curiosity? Because they take a 30% cut of all my revenue. Even like viewers from YouTube Red, right? Which they don't even. Yeah. I don't know. So what's the alternative? Not being partnered with Maker. Uh, supposedly being partnered with them gives you access to premium ads, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. But I guess I'll find out when I leave. <laughs> so you get your. I guess. What am I trying to say here? I don't know, Kyle. What are you trying to say? I don't know. I just want to say, damn, Daniel. Were you? Have you always been sponsored with or partnered with them? Like, weren't you with someone else before? Nope. What's going on with our battery shit? Why there's why was there some iron creeping in here? Is that fixed? I'm gonna assume that's fixed. I don't see anything else. Might have been when I set it up or something. Wait, is it just now turning day? Oh, okay. YouTube will also try and help if your channel gets fucked by bullshit. Maybe, I don't know. They never helped me with anything, I don't think. They got me the Destiny name on YouTube, which I'm grateful for. But I mean, I've been partnered with them for two months. Just go, f or two years. Just go full Patreon? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get that set up um, maybe tonight. I need somebody to do my subreddit stuff. I'm, I was gonna reach out to the guys at Monitor now, but like, I want a bot on my subreddit that can differentiate sub tiers. That's really important for me, so that I can start offering more value. And by offer value, I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna go against what I said before, and I'm gonna do one of the golden rules of fucking your shit over. And I'm going to restrict some things that <laughs> that have been previously freely available. I think I'm going to restrict the Monday mail threads to like tier two and above or something, or maybe even just any sub and above. I'm not sure. But one, it can help cut down on the spam in some of those threads because there are a lot of questions that don't get answered. And then two, I can start to give value to some of the people that are actually subscribed. That seems reasonable. Yeah, kind of, but you can't... Generally, as a rule of thumb, you can't usually take away things that you've offered for free and then put it's them behind difficult. a paywall. Yes. Well, yeah, it's yeah. usually very, very, very bad. <laughs> yeah. Can we just tear this whole fucking thing down and do it right? Because I'm probably gonna need. Wait, tear what whole thing down? This is the red chips. I'm thinking about just tearing this shit down and then moving it all down a little bit so I can fit more wire easily. Because I can double the production right now, but I feel like eventually I'm gonna need it even more than double it. Am I gonna pick up a satellite setup? Um, I don't know. Apparently the stream looked pretty good today, which was I didn't expect it would. I. So, I mean, if I just watched, yeah, I watched for like five minutes and yeah, it, I thought I was when, surprised at how, how, well you, how well it worked. I thought when driving around, I thought it would go to shit, but apparently it was doing okay, so. Isn't that gonna fuck your data though? You actually have it pay enough for data? I'm hoping with the way the buckets work on Ting, I'm hoping that it maxes out. <laughs> that like at $70 for data, they won't actually charge you anymore. <laughs> That seems like some significantly wishful thinking. Well, that's what it looks like because the final data bucket on the Ting site. Well, let's actually, maybe we could look it up. Hold on. Ting data rates. How is the S8? I don't know. I really like it. It's a good meme. 
Um, yeah, so like in Ting's data rates for, oh no, fuck. They have an XL and then they've got an XL plus and that's $10 per gigabyte. So if we say 30 gigabyte, your monthly bill would be $306. <laughs> Damn. Well, let's see how much data we use today. Um, where would I find this in the settings? I can't believe Aaron dropped my fucking phone. Holy shit, Kyle! <laughs> I did not know that. At the end of the thing, <laughs> after I argue with stream so much about it, god damn it. Okay, so we're looking for settings, and then connections. No. Wait, maybe it is under connections? Data usage, yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so today, from May 1st to May 30th, we're in May right now, right? We are May 2nd. That's what my desktop I've used 1.6 gigabytes of mobile data of my two gigabyte limit. Okay, fuck. In one day. How much did I stream today? Not much. Okay. <laughs> Not that much. Well. <laughs> Turn down the bit rate. Yeah, there's our one IRL stream this month. But I'm kind of sponsored by Ting, so I wonder if... I could get, like, an unlimited plan. Do you think? I don't know, man. Your account, current usage. I think Blue Belt will be able to support all this shit. Hope so. This is way too much. Yeah, I'm already pa Yeah, I am at $70 for internet already. Who has, does, is there really a provider with, is there really a provider with unlimited data? Like true Not unlimited? Data. Like I have unlimited data with Sprint, but that's because we're on a, we've been grandfathered in. So I don't think you can get that anymore. I think anyone who says unlimited data, they will fucking, uh, they will throttle you eventually. I can't look at their websites. I would have to like call and find out if they throttle you. I think everyone does. I'm I'm almost positive. Yeah, a lot of people are saying it doesn't exist anymore unless you get grandfathered in, so. Which is why I am hesitant to ever leave Sprint, even though they kind of suck in some areas. Well, that's technically that's what I use, so. Because Ting is, um, uses Sprint Towers. But I have, right, because I think that link still exists, right? If you go to destiny.gg slash ting, I think I've got like a thing on their site. So maybe, maybe I can work a deal out, I'm not sure. You can buy hotspots that are grandfathered in for like $75. Oh, uh, maybe. Is that what ICE did? Because if I just use two gigs, like, in a single day, the satellite shit won't help me at all. I'll go through it in a week. How did ICE figure out? How did ICE solve these things? Probably paid a retarded amount of money. That would be my guess, but I have, you know. Damn it, I didn't, whatever. I spot several data plans. Yeah, but listen to me, I'm like almost maxing out my data plan in a single day, streaming for like six hours. Was it even six hours? So well, even though I would have to get like 30 different data plans.
Stephen, maybe there's a reason why he didn't have that much money in the bank. That's because he spent it all on cell phone data. Maybe, dude. It was like one. Wait, did I really only stream for one hour? We used that much data in one hour? If we streamed two megabits per second, two megabits per second for 60 seconds for one hour divided by eight, that should only be 900 megabytes of data. How did we hit two? Th How did I hit so much so fast? How long did I stream for? An hour and a half? Well, fuck, why are you guys guessing? Twitch.tv slash destiny. Shut the fuck up. All right. Damn, why is my VODs all cut up and nasty? Holy shit. All right, so we got one hour, 10 minutes, one hour, 11 minutes, one hour, 12 minutes. Oh, and then I was testing last night. Okay, so we'll say an hour and a half to be generous. So that would be 90 minutes times, and I was probably doing like two megabits per second, times two megabits per second. Wait, I'm sorry, what? We're we doing two megabits per second is that many per minute times 90 divided by eight is getting us closer. Yeah, okay. Android gives you a breakdown of what apps use what. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, okay, we go to settings, we go to connections, data usage, Wi-Fi data usage, no. Mobile, how do I see it broken down by app? I know there is a way to do this. Oh, mobile data usage click, there we go. Bitstream use 1.5 gigabytes of data, so that's in one day. In in ninety minutes, <laughs> fuck. I don't know what this unlimited vill shit is. Wait, view plans. Wait, what's the difference between pocket phi, oh, yellow and pink plan? Is it gonna be like coverage? Oh, they're just different types of devices? Do they get like better reception or something? If these are truly unlimited, yeah, I wonder if this shit is more stable than Cox. <laughs> I could just use this instead of fucking... Huh, alright. We'll worry about that shit later, okay. This isn't relevant to my... Wait, so do we have blue track set up or are you still working on red chips? I'm working on red chips. Just go, I can go turn it on. Cause you'll probably fuck it up. Cause I set it all up. I just need to tell the assemblers to make it. 
Boom. Ah, rotate. Track. All right. Colors: blue equals at belt. red equals Verizon, yellow oh, equals Sprint. The, uh, Every big IRL plan. streamer uses and Unlimited. Villice has four of them. Staff Gun Run endorses it. Also, Ice has 20k plus viewers on YouTube. Lol. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> what? Remember how I died so many times yesterday? Yeah. What happened? You weren't wearing your armor. I have seven pistols. I have ten pistols in my inventory. Oh, you know, every time you, every yeah, time you, you start with boy, yeah, yeah, because... All right. Is it all right? Hello, blue belt. Goodbye, iron. Oh, shit, Kyle. What's oh, shit? There's a really good meme. Here, we can listen to this, okay? I think it's like a 15 minute meme, but this, or it might only be an eight minute meme. This is a 10 out of 10 meme, and I don't know if you've heard it before. I think we've listened to this on stream before, but we'll listen to it again. Okay, so these guys do a little thing. I think there's a few of these. Um, you Have you heard like, do, have you watched any Rick and Morty? Oh yeah, I've seen that season one too. Have I haven't seen the newest episode. Have you out. seen the Rick and Morty reenactment of like that courthouse scene? Um, I didn't watch it. No, it was I saw pretty, that it existed. It was pretty mimi. This is a dramatic reenactment of a um, of a transcript from a court, from a deposition. Also, okay? Ice and Andy Milanakis have access to unlimited and throttle sim cars from oh, unlimited. Okay. Villar Gun Run, think Staff Gun Run right, helped them with that. Run. This is a nine out of ten. Okay, are you ready? All right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm starting in five, four, three, two, one, zero. In 2010, the Cuyahoga County Recorder's Office in Ohio was sued when it decided to charge $2 per page for photocopies of public documents. The following scene is a deposition from the court case. The, the dialogue is presented verbatim. Information from your computer system onto the master CD is a device within the recorder's office. Is that correct, as opposed to being in some other building somewhere? Yes. During your tenure in the computer department at the recorder's office, has the recorder's office had photocopy machines? Objection. Any photocopying machine. When you say photocopying machine, what do you mean? Let me be... Let me make sure I understand your question. You don't have an understanding of what a photocopying machine <laughs> is? No, I want to make sure that I answer your question correctly. Dave, I'll object to the tone of the question. You make it sound like it's unbelievable to you that he wouldn't know what the definition Please of a photocopy machine to is. I didn't ask him to define it. I asked him if he had it. When you say photocopying machine, what do you mean? Let me be clear. The term photocopying machine is so ambiguous that you can't picture in your mind what a photocopying machine is in an office setting. I just want to make sure I answer your question correctly. Well, we'll find out. If you can say yes or no, I can do follow-ups. But it seems if you really don't know in an office setting what a photocopying machine is, I'd like the Ohio Supreme Court to hear you say so. I just want to make sure I answer your question correctly. There's different types of photocopiers, Dave. You're speaking instead of... You're not in a row. This guy is. I understand that. But I understand what his objection is. You want him to answer the question. I don't think it's fair. It's not fair? It's not a fair question. A photocopy machine can be a machine that uses photostatic technology, that uses xerographic technology, that uses scanning technology. I don't care what kind of technology it uses. Has your offices... We don't have technocrats on the Ohio Supreme Court. We've got people like me, general guys Objection. or gals. I'm not really very interested in what the technology element of it is. I want to know. That's what's at issue in the case, Dave. Not in my judgment. Do you have photocopying machines at the recorder's office? 
If you don't know what that means in an office setting, please tell the court you don't know what that means in an office setting to have a photocopying machine. <clears throat> I would like to answer your question to the best of my ability. I'm asking you to answer that. So if you could explain to me what you mean by... I'm not going to do that, because I want you... I want to establish on the record that you really don't know what it is. I want to establish that. Now, do you know what it is, or do you not know what it is? Do you understand what that term means in common parlance or not? Common parlance? Common language. I'm sorry. I didn't know what that meant. I understand that there are photocopying machines and there are different types of them, just like there are, are different Are there any cars. in the recorder's office? Some of them office? run under gas power, some of them under electric power, and I'm asking if you could help me out by explaining what you mean by photocopying That's machine. That's a great point. Instead of trying to make me feel stupid. If you feel stupid, it's not because I'm making you feel that way. Objection! I have self-confidence, and I have no problem. I don't think you're stupid. I think I don't have any problem answering the question. I think you're playing games with me. Dave, the word photocopying is at issue in this case. And you're asking him whether something is or isn't a photocopy machine, which is a legal conclusion. This isn't a patent case. There's no statute that defines where I'm asking him to define technology for me. I'm asking. I want to find out from a layperson's perspective, not from an engineer's perspective, not from a technician's perspective, but from... I have an idea. How about this? Have you ever heard the term photocopier or photocopy used in the recorder's office by anybody? Photocopy? I'm sure in the time I've been there, someone has used the term. And have you ever heard them use it in referencing a particular device or machine within the recorder's office? By way of example, can you photocopy that for me? That's an example of office parlance. That particular terminology I've not witnessed. What was the context that you heard the term photocopy used in the recorder's office? I'm sure it's been used. Uh, I didn't say I remembered a specific instance. All right. But you have a general understanding that people have used the term photocopy within the recorder's office in terms of something that could be done there. Is that true? I'm sure it's been used. I don't remember a specific instance or how it was used. I'm sure it's been used. And is it fair to say that it's been used in terms of being able to copy one piece of paper onto another piece of paper using a machine? No? Not sure of that? I'm sure it's been used. I don't recall a specific instance in which it was. Do you have a secretary? No. Does anybody there have a secretary? Yes. Have you ever heard a secretary use the term photocopy? No. Have you ever? Do you have machines there where I can put in a paper document, push a button or two, and out will come copies of that paper document also on paper? Do you have such a machine? Yes, sir. What do you call that machine? Xerox. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Nice meme. <laughs> it was a nice meme, Kyle. I agree. It's like debating Sargon. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, boys. Oh no! DSP fucked himself again. Yeah, you're gonna listen to this. You're right. This guy is really funny. This guy does some really dumb shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm starting at 3, 2, 1, go. Uh-oh. What is up, everyone? Phil here with a vlog I had no intention of making. If you can believe it, YouTube yet again has completely screwed something up. Nothing to do with me doing anything wrong. Um, And it's screwing me over, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Again. It's now at the point... That YouTube is screwing up so much on such a regular basis, I'm really feeling like I need to make an effort to take my YouTube slash internet presence for gaming and move it to Twitch, alright? I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible, so please pay attention. Basically, right now, I cannot upload any gameplay videos to either DSP Gaming or KO Gaming because advertisements are disabled on the channel, 
and it doesn't seem like there's any way I can get them uh, enabled, at least right now, and I need to explain to everyone the situation because it's a huge oversight by YouTube, okay? Here's what happened. YouTube just lost over 250 of their major uh, advertiser providers, meaning people who used to advertise, companies that used to advertise on the website, left the website because they determined that their ads were being shown on inappropriate videos. Videos that were adult content that they didn't want to advertise on, videos that were uh, terrorism, racism, all kinds of that kind of stuff. And places like Walmart, Starbucks, huge companies that were paying YouTube tons of money to advertise pulled away and said, we're not coming back till you fix your system. So, last month, in April, it was announced by YouTube that they were changing the way that they were going to enable channels to have monetization uh, because of this issue. They realized that advertisers want some kind of check and balance. So, YouTube announced that they were going to have a criteria. You need to have 10,000 views total on your YouTube channel in order to get monetization. And that was all that YouTube said publicly. They didn't mention anything else about content of the channel. They didn't mention anything else about a new review process. Nothing. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? YouTube did not disclose that not only do you need 10,000 views on your channel, you also need to have your YouTube channel approved for an AdSense account. Yes, a personal AdSense account. Regardless of the fact if you're going to use that AdSense account yourself to run ads or if you're going to partner with a network, YouTube is now requiring that you have an AdSense account associated with your channel to start before you can even get approval, okay? Then... If you have 10,000 views and you have an AdSense account on your YouTube channel that's associated with it and approved, then it goes to an approvals queue, which YouTube says can take up to a week for them to review. And once they've reviewed it and said, okay, we don't see anything bad on your channel that advertisers wouldn't want to be associated with, then you finally get the ability to run ads on your channel and or you finally get the ability to have your channel partnered with a new network. For example, Machinima, Curse, uh, what's the other one? Full screen, any of those networks, they all now have to have all this stuff done behind the scenes first before they can partner your channel. This is brand spanking new. Even the partnership network that I am now attempting to partner with didn't know anything about this. YouTube told no one. They just literally rolled it out and told no one. Again, yes, they've done this ever since I started on YouTube. They make changes without telling anyone about them, and we all have to figure it out for ourselves, okay? So, what is going on with me? Why is this bad? Why am I stuck with no ads on DSP Gaming or KO Gaming? Well, I was partnered with Curse Network. And they were running ads and everything was fine. YouTube made this new change behind the scenes, okay? Not telling anybody. And so, my new network said, okay, we'll disassociate your channels. Ask that Curse release DSP Gaming and KO Gaming from those channels so we can partner you and we're going to put you into managed partnerships. That's the reason I'm leaving Curse and I'm going to a new network. So I did that. Curse released me this morning. I went to go into the to, to you know to my channel to say, okay, is it released? And it says, oh, you cannot get partnered with anyone. You cannot run ads until you do these criteria first. And I'm looking at it like, what? So I went to my new network and they confirmed. They said, yeah, we can't partner you. You have to do those new steps first. There's a whole checklist of steps you have to do to enable monetization before you can even be partnered with someone. So first of all, I have 10,000 views on both of those channels. That criteria is satisfied. I had to accept the terms and conditions of monetization. That I did. The second step is have a Google AdSense account uh, associated with your channel. Now, there's a problem here, folks. You can only legally own one Google AdSense account. Period. You can only own one. You can't have more than one AdSense account. It's not allowed per the terms and conditions of Google. So, I was doing this and I did it both for DSP Gaming and for KO Gaming. First, I did it for DSP Gaming. Hey, buddy. I said, hey, a buddy. Google AdSense hey, buddy. Account for DSP Senpai. Gaming associated with it. Filled out all the appropriate info. Okay. Submitted it. All right. And then it went down and YouTube said, okay, your account is now ready for, you know, for our review. We'll review it within one week and we'll get back to you to let you know if you're approved or not. Okay. I went to KO Gaming behind the scenes. And I did all the stuff, you know, 10,000 views, check, uh, you know, uh, accepted the terms and conditions, check. I applied for a Google AdSense account for KO Gaming. Put all that information in there, okay? Submitted it, okay, all right, you submitted, now we're, we'll review it, all right? So, I was out today doing stuff. Today was my day off from streaming, and I was out doing personal stuff. I get an email, and the email says, if I can read it, I'm going to read it to you. Uh-oh, what's the email uh, Here it is. Oh, shit. Thank you for your interest in Google AdSense. While reviewing your application, we noticed that you already have a uh, your, uh, an account with the information that matches the account you're trying to create here, and that AdSense is associated with KO Gaming. 
Since our AdSense program policies do not permit multiple accounts, we're unable to accept your new application at this time. And that's it. That's the email. So basically, I got an email at DSP Gaming telling me I can't associate DSP Gaming with an AdSense account because I tried to create an account and there's already one associated with KO Gaming. Now I'm like, wait a minute. I tried to create the account for DSP Gaming first and I double checked. Yeah, I tried to create that account a half an hour, 30 minutes before I tried to, to do the account for KO Gaming. So what does that mean? It means that even YouTube's system for approving AdSense account is broken. Google's AdSense account itself is broken. It took longer for an account that I tried to create before another account to be approved or reviewed. It makes no fucking sense at all. Zero sense, okay? So, sure enough, when I got home from my day out, I'm like, what happened here? So I start looking into it. I go to KO Gaming. KO Gaming now says it has an AdSense account approved and associated with it. So now that's in going to final review with YouTube. And within a week, I should have an answer from YouTube whether or not I can run ads and partner with my new network or not. Of course, the answer is going to be yes. Everything on KO Gaming is just edited style, you know, reviews and stuff. There's nothing on that channel that could be associated and be seen as not, you know, advertiser friendly or anything like that. That's definitely that channel is going to get approved no matter what. But I go to DSP Gaming and it says, your channel has been denied for monetization because you do not have a valid AdSense account associated with it and the one that you tried to create was denied. Oh my god. I'm just like, are you got to be kidding me, right? So you're telling me that KO Gaming is probably going to get approved and DSP Gaming now is being denied. The one channel that has all the following, the one that gets all the views on all the gameplay videos, right? The channel that everyone knows is the go-to channel for my playthroughs is not going to have any ads and I can't make videos for it anymore. But you're going to approve the new channel that was supposed to be for edited content. And it's, I'm like, you got to be joking. This is insane. This is insanity at this point. Like, what the hell? Okay. So I said, all right, maybe I can fix this. Let me take a look. So I looked into it. Okay. What can I do? Oh, it actually says, all right, when you go to, to, to redo this process, to relink it to an, an AdSense account, it says, okay, you don't have to create a new AdSense account for DSP Gaming. You can link it to an existing one. Therefore, you'll have multiple YouTube channels all linked to the same AdSense account. That's what I want to do, right? So I put in the information. I want to link this to the, D to the KO Gaming AdSense that's worked and it's approved now. I put all the information in. I submit it, okay? Now the screen changes. The screen now says, okay, it's, you're not denied anymore for partnership. You're now back under review, okay? But when I go to say, okay, what AdSense account is DSP Gaming associated with? It doesn't show the data for KO Gaming. It shows the old data from the account I tried to make this morning that was denied. And I'm like, this is insane. So not only is YouTube requiring that if you're going to have partnership, even with a network, that you need to have a personal AdSense account, which makes no sense because you're never going to use it, right? You're going to be linked with a network. It's their AdSense account that needs to be approved, not yours. So that step is completely and utterly broken. It shouldn't be like that. That's number one. Number two, if you have more than one YouTube channel like me, you have to find a way to link one AdSense account to all of them, but YouTube's process to do that is completely broken. Once you try to, uh, to create an AdSense for it, there's no way to ever disassociate that AdSense with it. There's no link to oh, disassociate AdSense from this channel and start over. Nothing. It just seems to be permanently linked. Even when I went through the steps to link this AdSense account from KO Gaming that works, it didn't work. And it still shows it's like it's the old one that's not going to work. Now, more than likely what's going to happen is overnight or within 24 hours, I'm going to get another automated email <clears throat> through the SP Gaming. It's going to say the same thing. It's going to say, oh, you're still associated with an account that doesn't work. Okay. And I'm probably going to get denied again. So I did two things. The first thing I did, I wrote my partnership network, the new one. And I said, listen, I at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Because I can't do anything on my end, and if this denies me again, I can't even create a new one. I can't do you link to an existing one. I'm stuck with DSP Gaming linked to a denied AdSense account, so I can't get to the next step to get it approved for monetization so you can link it. Is there anything you can do on your end? All right. At the same time I did that, I wrote an email, because a lot of people don't know this, for YouTube channels that have over 100,000 subscribers and get over 100,000 view hours in a year. There is an email address that you can write to that actually has direct support for YouTubers. Only big, only ones who have that much. You have to have 100,000 subs and 100,000 viewing hours in one year. They actually have a line that you can write and ask a question. And they're supposed to help you. All right. The problem with this 
is that I tried this two months ago, if you remember correctly. Two months ago, I was having issues with my ad revenue absolutely plummeting. And I didn't understand why my ad revenue had plummeted. And I wrote them asking them, is the why? Is there, is there, could this be a mistake? Is there a reason? Can you help me? And they literally just beat it around the bush and didn't give me any kind of a definitive answer whatsoever. They just, just bullshit answer after bullshit answer without actually answering the question I had asked them. And there's actually two times ever that I wrote that email address, I got the same kind of deal where I wasn't getting a definitive answer. I was getting, oh, here's a form letter that is the process. I'm like, but no, I'm having problem with that process. I need help with it. Oh, well, maybe this fact will help you. No, I used that fact to do that already and the process still doesn't work. That's why I need help. And then they won't, they won't answer you basically. They won't give you help. So at this point, I wrote an email to this creator support email address. And I said, I explained the whole situation. And I said, what I need you to do, because I can't do it apparently, is disassociate this broken AdSense account that was de denied and associate DSP Gaming with the working AdSense account that KO Gaming is associated with. So we'll have two channels associated with the same account, which by the way, will never be used because I'm trying to link the goddamn channels to a partner network. So as soon as that happens, they're gonna be delinked anyway and none of this matters. <clears throat> am I expecting to get any kind of an intelligent answer or help? No, I'm not. I am screwed everyone. I don't know what to do because here's the deal. Yes, I have been making new kinds of gameplay videos that are much more catered towards interaction with people on Twitch. We all know that. People are saying my gameplay videos are better now that I'm doing videos that are for Twitch, okay? Because, I have, yes, the stream interaction can be distracting from the gameplay, but seeing the reactions that I have, I'm more positive about the games and everything that I'm playing. It's turning into something much better. People are saying it's like the original days when I used to make these videos. I'm reinvigorated again, and they want to see this continue. They want this attitude to continue, so I'm loving the changes that I've made. But the bottom line is about half of the money that I make during a month is from YouTube. Yes, even though I know I'm not making those YouTube videos playthroughs anymore where I'm hyper-focused on the game and I'm ignoring stream chat. I'm not doing that anymore for the most part. That money from YouTube view ad revenue is my lifeblood. It's half my paycheck. Without that, I can't pay my bills. All right? I don't know what to do. Because I don't know if YouTube's going to be able to fix this. I don't know if my new partnership network is going to be able to have contacts within YouTube that are going to be able to fix this. It seems to me YouTube implemented a completely new system to review channels for monetization approval because they got in so much hot water from Walmart and Starbucks leaving because they were giving ads to anyone. They were giving ads to terrorists and racists and videos that were about sex and videos that were about politics to the far left or far right that these companies didn't want to be associated with. And therefore... They pulled the plug. So YouTube did a knee-jerk reaction instead of actually thinking, let's just implement something really quickly to get video channels approved. So we have to have this manual approval process, but it has to have AdSense linked to it, which makes no sense if you're going with a partnership network, all right? So the reason I'm telling you guys and gals this is simple. Number one, I can't upload gameplay videos to DSP Gaming or KO Gaming until these channels get approved and have ads enabled. I just can't. I need to save those videos so I can make money. Okay, that's my money right there, and I can't just release everything for free and then go out of business. So, any gameplay that I'm doing until this issue is resolved is going to be exclusively on Twitch TV. All right, so every day you're gonna, I'm still gonna have live streams, and what I'll do is I'll archive those live streams on Twitch for those who want to go over there and check out those live streams. You can still be caught up on all my playthroughs and everything, but sadly. I have no control over this. It's all in the hands of YouTube, and we all know, already know they're inept at what they do. They don't know how to handle these situations, and chances are I'm not going to get any satisfactory answer from the customer support line, and I don't know if my new partnership network is going to be able to help me with this issue. It seems like a technical oversight that they completely botched because they are, again, I said this a million times, they are book smart, not street smart. They were great. They wrote the code for the new process, right? Another algorithm, another code. Have an AdSense account associated with it. Have a, a, a process to review the channel. A new page with all this information that's required to get into the review process. But then no one fucking tested it to see what would happen if something went wrong or someone got declined for an AdSense. Now you can't disassociate it. Things that a normal human would think as like a, a tester, you're I have to test this program before I make it go live, right? Because this could potentially not work and then people would be screwed. Why would YouTube do that? No, they never do that. They just rush everything out new and a knee jerk reaction to something that went wrong. They don't test it, they don't, and it's us. We're the guinea pigs. We are the guinea pigs, all right? So, folks, it's not looking good. 
It's just not looking good in regards to DSP gaming, and I don't know what to do. I'm actually, I'm, again, I'm in panic mode. The good news is, we just had a very good March and a very good April, where it looks like the money that I raised in those months, I'm going to be getting paid for that come May and June here, okay? But I've already got one day in May. I've made no revenue on YouTube because of this. How many more days is it going to be? Is it, you know what I mean? If I get KO Gaming back, like let's say KO Gaming, it gets approved, and then I can put it into this new, you know, partnership, and it was managed partnership, do I start uploading gameplay videos there? So at least I can make some money? The problem is, I know I don't get any of that viewership any. for raw gameplay videos on KO Gaming. That might make people unsubscribe from KO Gaming, because they only subscribe there to see the edited style videos, right? And now they're unsubbed, and that could destroy the channel. Plus, I know, like I said, I'm not going to get that mainstream viewership on DSP Gaming that I get for those those videos. I'm not going to get that right away on KO Gaming. People aren't going to migrate over right away. They're going to be like, I don't understand. And a lot of people don't even pay attention. They'll come back months later. What happened here and think that I'm dead because I didn't upload any videos. So I'm between a rock and a hard place. I really don't know what to do right now. Everything's up in the air yet again and uncertain because YouTube has screwed up again and screwed me over again. Yeah, how do you think you can blame me for this one? I have no idea. This is their own coding issue that has fucked me. That is like a direct... I sat here and I coded this. Oops, didn't test it. Doesn't work. Well, you fucked me over. Thanks, whoever that was at Google. I really appreciate your expertise and your Ivy League degree that you probably have. You're an idiot and you didn't do your fucking job. And now I'm paying the price hundreds of dollars a day. I'm losing now. Not making any money on DSP Gaming. And I, again, if this goes on a lengthy time, I don't know what to do, all right? I appeal to you, the viewers. Number one, if you can at all show up for my live streams, if you can tip, cheer, uh, sub to the channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash darksidephil, please do. That channel fucking works, and I haven't had an issue with it. You know what I mean? It doesn't it seem to me all these circumstances are pushing me off of YouTube and away from YouTube. It's almost like their own ineptitude, in a way, is going to screw YouTube over. Because how many people are going to leave YouTube and say, we're not putting up with this bullshit anymore? Why didn't they just close? There was a new process behind the scenes to even get linked to an, a, a partnership network. It makes no sense. They don't disclose anything because they don't, they're don't, not smart. They have an Ivy League degree and they're an idiot. I, I don't know how to describe it. How do you do it like this? It's just so stupid. It makes no sense. So, I don't know. So, if you can, please attend my streams. Please do everything you can to support right now because I don't know what else to do. All right, I really don't. I don't know what else I can possibly do. If KO Gaming does get approved, at least as a last resort, if DSP Gaming is still endlessly in limbo and can't be fixed, maybe I can upload my raw gameplay videos to KO Gaming and we have to use KO Gaming as the channel moving forward and DSP Gaming sadly becomes an archive channel because I can never monetize it because they screwed it the fuck up. I don't know. Um, this sucks. This really freaking sucks, guys. Now, here's the other thing. I've got playthroughs going on that were non-streamed, meaning they were playthroughs that were meant to be just ongoing playthroughs on YouTube. Um, for example, Rampa, which I was going to continue tomorrow. I can't upload those videos to YouTube, you know? So what I'm thinking of doing, because tomorrow I was going to play the Neo DLC, which is uh, Dragon of the North, on my stream, which was going to be at 11 a.m., and then later in the day I was going to do a session of Rampa offline, completely off-stream, and just upload that to DSP Gaming. All that's screwed up now. So what I'm going to do, I'm still going to stream Neo, and I, if nothing gets resolved with DSP Gaming during the course of tomorrow, I'm going to live stream Rampa tomorrow night on Twitch. I'm going to have the stream chat closed. I'm going to disable pop-up messages during this stream, and I'm going to put the chat into sub-only mode. I have to do it, because you know what happens with these narrative-based games. There will be assholes coming in trying to spoil... So I apologize to anyone who may attend this stream. Oh man, I wanted to participate and I wanted to talk with people. I might have to turn it into sub-only mode tomorrow night to avoid He's so that dramatic issue. about everything. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. It's the I end of the world. I don't know what else to do to avoid it. Um, and moving forward, you know, Wednesday was also going to be Neo and Rampa. Again, if DSP Gaming isn't fixed, then I guess it's going to have to be exclusively on Twitch for now. And what I'll do, I'll leave those streams archived on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash darksidephil. So for those who aren't there live, you can you can watch them on demand. And please, if you can sub to the channel afterward, because apparently, you know, I don't, obviously, you're not going to be cheering, right? While no one's there, you're watching it on demand at your own leisure. But if you could sub and do other stuff to support right now, whatever you could do on Twitch to support me, I would appreciate it because my, G my GSP gaming channel may be dead.
thanks to Google and YouTube being completely fucking stupid and not knowing what they're doing. Again, I've been screwed by the same people. Yet they're the ones who are fine. They're sitting cushy at their jobs. They have no problems whatsoever. Actually, that's not the truth. Probably they're all in hot water, I would think. Because when you lose 250 major advertising companies and you are in such dire straits that you're rushing to write algorithms and things like this and change everything on YouTube, I get the feeling that someone's going to get fired over there if they don't fix this shit. So... We'll see, folks. At the, at the very least, hopefully... The next couple of months, May and June, I'll be okay because March and April were good and I made it ad revenue on YouTube and all of that. But now it looks like starting in May, I'm screwed again. It's like back to square one. How many times can we fix this problem, you know? Late last year, things went wrong. People rallied on Patreon and it worked out and they you know, kind of saved my butt then. Then all of a sudden, early this year, things went wrong. People rallied on Twitch. You saved my butt then. Now all of a sudden, YouTube goes wrong again. It's like, I, I just... Seriously, I just want to fucking play games and have fun and, and just share that with you every day and not have to worry about any of this shit that has nothing to do with me doing anything wrong. I've done nothing wrong. I'll get one again. And people, oh, Phil likes to play the victim. Play the victim. No, no, no. Hi, I'm done with this game. Rip. <laughs> Ripperino, cappuccino, puppuccino. That video is so long. So correct me if I'm wrong, but YouTube doesn't actually make money, does it? Like I don't for think you, for so. Google? Or they might have just started to make money. But I they think. were they've they've been seen as a lost leader for a long time, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Like if they like if they just started to make money, it was in the past few years, I think. Okay. So I remember hearing I remember always hearing that, that they never really made any money. And it's like I don't know. Feels weird having just the idea of having your livelihood connected to something that's not profitable like that. Yeah. I don't know. It seems spooky.